joining me in the studio, generally I say, these people are like you. They don't have any superhuman mutant powers. Now there's an exception. Exception is this guy because uh, Walter O'Brien, I've known for about a decade, I think. Yeah, about that now. About a decade. Um, I have my personal story, which to me is the most, I would say the most unusual way to meet somebody because you did not know how to market yourself or even talk about yourself. Do you remember when we yeah, first met? No, absolutely. Okay, yeah. I, I remember the restaurant. You sat down, opened up your wallet, and you go, hey, I don't know how to describe myself. And you pull out newspaper clippings about yourself. And you said, just read these. <laughs> so I sat there for about 10 minutes reading in front of you these newspaper clippings. That's how you introduced yourself. And 10 years later, you still remember me. You still doing that that way? <laughs> no, not quite. What do you do now? You just show the TV trailer? No, I just point them to the website with the news clippings. <laughs> <laughs> Walter O'Brien, uh, I want to first say congratulations, second season of Scorpion on CBS. Thank you. It's going pretty well. Yeah, yeah. We, we uh, for a couple of weeks there, our ratings beat NCIS and CSI. Which is amazing. But, well, um, there's a, I, I think... Those shows have been around, what, 15 years? 12, 13 years, yeah. yeah. so it's time for the baton to be handed off to something else. Well, but... Yeah, and we wanted to be the A-team slash MacGyver of, you know, teenagers growing up, kind of like a cyber James Bond, modern version of James Bond, and that's the feedback we're getting. Kids are watching it with their parents and loving it. And getting inspired to start looking at things that are not sports related. The amount of emails I have now saying, I'm going to study computer science. I want to study what you studied. What books did you read? The fan mail is incredible. It's very, very supportive. But that's what you wanted. That was Absolutely. the whole goal of what the whole show was about, right? Eight, eight years from now, I hope to hire those kids as they graduate. So Walter is a unique case. You came to the United States on a, a very unique visa, correct? Right, the EB-11 visa. It's an extraordinary ability visa where you're of national interest to the U.S. economy. Einstein had that, I think. Uh, the, the previous people given the same kind of fast track was Einstein and Winston Churchill. Wow, okay. And you came to the United States. Um, did you know what you were going to do when you came to the United States? I knew it would be in technology and computers, but as that universe blew up and expanded, I had no idea which aspect of it. Right. I My whole journey, I started by doing kind of like Geek Squad does now, running around fixing people's printers and computers. That's what you're doing initially. Barcode scanners and stuff like that. Yeah, because it was uh, Ireland, 1987. That was all we had. The cash, fancy cash registers was basically what I was fixing. And then I got into globalization, translating U.S. software into 49 commercial languages so we could sell it in other countries and writing the tools for that. And then I fell into bigger problems, supply chain management for Ericsson and Caterpillar and Motorola, where how do you get all the chips and pieces for your phone together on time to manufacture 100, you know, 100 or a million phones? You, you see the problem and the solutions very quickly. That's something you just do. That's inherently about you, It's intuitive about you, right? to me, yeah. Right. It, it, it's part of what you are. Uh, you have a high IQ, which does not necessarily mean you're smart. I mean, that you particularly... Correct. It just means you have a, a, a better way or a different way of processing. It's basically you have a fast processor. As long as the information is accurate, then that's what makes you smart, correct? Correct. Cornell published a report a little while ago saying that 85% of your success and wealth is built by your EQ, your ability to do human engineering of others. That's the emotional quota. Correct. And 15% comes from your IQ. So I had IQ but very little EQ and spent the rest of my life trying to build up and change the EQ to try and be a little bit better well-rounded. Well, in the decade that I've known you, your EQ has changed dramatically. Thank you. I've had a couple of people comment on that. <laughs> well, haven't you noticed it too? I've noticed, I actually noticed the effect of it more. The, 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 uh, the byproduct. The byproduct of having more friends, having a greater network, having more things happen, to be invited to more things, to get majority vote for more things. And a lot of it I dedicate back to, I probably have epiphanies, about once every four years or so, kind of a light bulb turns on. And um, I think early in my years, I was very divisive. People either loved me or hated me based on what I did. And I was okay with that because the ones who loved me were usually the change agents and mm -hmm. the more dynamic people. But they were also the minority. Real quick, Walter O'Brien's joining us. If you go to businessrockstars.com, you can see what's happening in the studio while we're talking to you on radio. On Walter's, uh, what is that? That's your right hand. You have a ring. And on that ring, there's a symbol. What is it? That's the scorpion. Um, scorpion. The top executives in our company all wear these because we're married to our work. 
<laughs> Are you serious? Is that why you have them? Yeah, it's it's actually the company's as much a cult as it is a company. People really believe in the mission of what we're doing and the nature and value system of integrity of how we want to work. What is the company? ScorpionComputerServices.com. It's beyond computers, isn't it? It has. That's what the, what's happened over the last five years. It's exciting. We opened up a new brand, actually, because our original name didn't represent it properly, called ConciergeUp.com. Which I love this idea. Why don't you explain it? Normally, if you're at a hotel, you concierge down things that are too simple to do yourself. Get me a taxi, get my dry cleaning. Imagine if you could concierge up in your life things that are too complex to do yourself, Give but you don't have example. time. Like what? Make my book a bestseller, uh, retire my parents, put a shark tank in my office, cho choose winning racehorses based on their DNA. What you've actually done by that. This is all correct requests that you've already fulfilled. Correct. Yes. And we get these requests now every hour on conciergeup.com. People type them in. You type it in Google if you want to search it. You type it in concierge up if you want it to happen. <laughs> I love the confidence. It's true. How big is your yeah. team? Uh, now we're, we're consortium is a little over 3,000 people. 3,000 people. And you buy a scorpion currency. And you use this currency, which is very inexpensive, by the way, because you 150 found 150 bucks an hour. And, and, and that's the group you get. Right. So it's not one person. You get the combined right. force of Scorpion. You get, because of what you talked about earlier with the IQ versus EQ, mm -hmm. we realized that with EQ being so important, we had to hire people we call super nannies. And super nannies are people with naturally high EQ, usually a psychology background with a certification in PMP. Which we see that on the TV show. Correct. Catherine McPhee on the TV show plays the first super nanny. What does PM? PMP stands for project management professional, kind of like a general contractor. So that's the account manager who gets assigned to you, the super nanny or super butler. And then they babysit the geniuses and the customers to, to communicate back and forth what they need. So if they talk directly to each other, it's a disaster. It. So I want you to do this. When we come back, Walter, help us manage smart people. High IQ. Can you help us give us three tips? Sure, absolutely. Okay, Walter O'Brien's joining us. Scorpion Computer Services. Our concierge up is the other platform, which you want to go check out. Both of them are pretty amazing. He is from the TV show Scorpion. He is Scorpion himself. He's Walter O'Brien. When we come back, we'll find out what it takes to manage high IQ people. I'm Ken Rakowski. You're listening to Business Rockstars. It's time to take profanity out of business. I'm Ken Rakowski. This is a Business Rockstars Minute. I love the English language. It's one of the most complex on the planet. So why do we need to swear? Why do we need to use profanity? See, when you talk intelligent, it brings you up a whole new level. Come on, you want your bombastic phraseology to be too copious for most people's apprehension. That's what you want to sound like. You want to sound like you have an MD, PhD in whatever you say. When you use profanity, it brings you down a level. It brings you to a point to where you don't even know what the words you use mean. So why use profanity when there's so many other great words that are out there that can actually help you in business? It's time for you to open up a dictionary and learn real words that really matter. Profanity? Why? Lowers your IQ, lowers the way people see you. It's time to bring you up a whole new level, learning bigger words that matter. I'm Ken Rakowski. This is a Business Rockstars Minute. Attention. Renew is currently seeking participants who are dealing with stress and unhappiness. If you are experiencing one or more of the following symptoms, you are eligible to participate in the trial and receive a free two-week supply of the mood-boosting supplement, Renew. To be eligible, your symptoms may include fatigue, hopelessness, tension, negative mood, anxiety, or lack of sleep. Renew is an all-natural, doctor-recommended supplement that will help boost your mood and give you more energy right away. Renew has been featured on Oprah and The View and has already helped over a million people feel better naturally. Now you are eligible to participate in the free trial if you or someone you know are experiencing symptoms of stress and unhappiness. Call now to participate in the trial and receive a free two-week supply of Renew. To participate in the Renew trial and get a free supply, call 1-800-514-1000. 1-800-514-1000. Call 1-800-514-1000. 1-800-514-1000. Allstate's 10th Annual America's Best Drivers Report ranks the largest 200 cities in the country based on car collision frequency. Fort Collins, Colorado is named America's safest driving city, with Brownsville, Texas coming in second. 
Allstate's Mike Roach explains how, this year, the report is more comprehensive than ever. On the Allstate website, we now have a new tool that's interactive and allows consumers to look at their city's rankings for 2014 and to look back historically for the rankings during the 10-year history that we run this report. For the first time, the report factors in how things like population, population density, and precipitation can affect each city's ranking. Allstate offers tips on dealing with these challenging roadway conditions. When driving in precipitation, it's always key to know and understand the road conditions, where you're heading, and also keeping your vehicle properly maintained because you never know when bad weather is going to strike. To see the 2014 rankings and interactive map, visit allstate.com slash best drivers report. I'm Bob Dorigo Jones, and this is Let's Be Fair. With weather turning warmer, many kids want to start riding their bikes to school. And why not? Cycling is not only great fun, it's healthy. But some school districts across the country have actually banned biking to and from school. The reason? Officials point to safety concerns and an underlying fear that they'll be sued if a child is injured while riding their bike to or from school. A national organization that promotes bicycling estimates that restrictive school policies act as a barrier to children biking to school for more than 8 million American families. But are these policies really better for the school and students? Well, that's debatable. The group has published a report that indicates bike bans may actually expose a school to more liability than letting kids ride. Let's be fair. Safety and bike riding can go together. Thoughtful policies that allow school not only respect parental rights, they provide needed options for families and support student health and educational success too. Learn more. Visit our website at centerforamerica.org. Business Rockstars, where we teach you what you need to know to become a rock star entrepreneur. I like this next quote. It actually, uh, I, I think, works with star in the studio right now. It's, it's, here's the quote. It's from Biz Stone from Twitter. It says, timing, perseverance, and 10 years of trying will eventually make you look like an overnight success. Ken Rakowski, Business Rockstars, joining me in the studio right now and see who's hanging out with us while you're listening to us on radio, businessrockstars.com is our website. Joining me is Mr. Walter O'Brien, a uh, overnight 10-year success. I mean, take, no, let's face 25 it. years. 25 years. <laughs> you have, because you were in most cases, and not with the NSA and not with FBI and Interpol. They all knew you, but no one really knew you until. Yeah, I mean, we do government work and we do Fortune 500 work. And the first thing to do in a Fortune 500 contract is put you under non-disclosure. Right. Can't talk about it. You can't do a press release about it. They won't do a reference on it. You're lucky if they say you worked here from this date to this date, and that's all they say. They won't say you were good or bad. So it's very hard to talk about or prove a lot of stuff we've done because it wasn't in the public eye. So when someone typed your name in prior to the TV show, nothing really would show up because they couldn't talk about the you. The old stuff we did with the Olympics and competitions I won and stuff like that would show up. But yeah, I'm not definitely wasn't in the public eye until the TV show came out. Now, I want people to realize that your team has solved some pretty big mysteries or some pretty big situations. For example, which is, I would say in the news right now, the Boston bombing. What is something you guys do with the Boston bombing? Well, with us, it's the technology that Scorpion produces is all around image recognition, video recognition, and what they call intelligence surveillance. So it's when you have footage, like you had in the Boston bombing, you had 4,000 hours of footage, um, you can't watch it all fast enough. So you have mm -hmm. to figure out, okay, what matters? Which parts of this footage have nothing interesting going on? And how can we eliminate that? And then which parts of it where people are reacting, it's questionable. can we define what they call herd think, where you track everyone's heads and you see that everyone went down at the same time, was surprised at the same time, ran in the same direction at the same speed. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone moved early, didn't go down, didn't act surprised or walked in the opposite direction, they're not acting like the rest of the herd. And there's software that can detect this stuff, and we write that kind of software. It's amazing. Walter O'Brien's joining us. So, Walter, uh, IQ-wise, over a certain IQ, what's considered a high IQ level? 140 and above? Uh, 140 is Mensa, yeah. So that's considered the top, I think, top 2% or less. My, my son's like a 172, I think, okay? Wow. He's up right. there. Yeah, but at 172, he, he, he changes in most respects to other kids, right? He he is different. You already know this. You know, people would say you're on the spectrum in some cases when you're up there, okay? So when someone has a high IQ, 
they might be able to do certain things really well. My son speaks multiple languages. He, any instrument he touches, he could play within an hour. I mean, he's got super human capabilities. But on the other side, connecting with people is a little different. EQ is different. Yeah, and that happens because you connect with people normally based on what you have in common with them. Mm -hmm. The less you have in common with them, the harder it is to connect. Also, when you're trying to deliver a message, usually you have your inner voice, your inner sounding board. So if you had something awkward to tell a friend, you'd ask yourself first, what's a good way of saying this that wouldn't hurt my feelings? Well, that inner sounding board, which is a mirror of your own mind, is broken and offset when you're a prodigy. So what you would say to yourself, like I look fat in those jeans, it might be fine to you, but it's not fine to the general public. And you don't know what appropriate means. Ah, so how do you deal, how can you give us suggestions how to deal with really smart people that are working for us? There's a number of things. Uh, number one, the, their number one concern is they would get bored. So really fast, actually. We put all of our guys on three projects at the same time, constantly t- contact switching every week, even if they're little projects, just so they don't get bored. Secondly, they, they hate when their boss is an idiot. So they want the boss above them to be smarter than them or more experienced so they can learn. Learning is more important to them, again, than money. Constantly be learning. And the super nannies teach them EQ, which is the one thing they don't know. So they like learning that because it starts re-engineering and changing themselves. And they can see the results for it. And we have particular seven different ways of teaching them EQ. Okay. Um, but o- only 70% of the prodigies are capable of changing themselves. The other 30% are so stuck in a cycle, they're not smart enough to change themselves, and we have to let them go. They, they do you find f- them flake pretty... out of prob- probation. I was going to say, do you figure them out fairly quickly, or does it take some time? Um, some we figure out in the initial interview. Some it takes six months to figure out. Okay. Um, other things is just a sense of fairness. They want to be treated fair for what they do and what they contribute. They like to quantify things that people normally don't quantify in a business situation. And they feel better if mathematically in their head they know they're treated fairly and appreciated for the meaning of what they do. So they need to be on wise, a mission. Reward-wise, how do you compensate or reward a, a highly intelligent individual? Well, um, actually, the normal rewards of, you know, let's give them a vacation yeah, or a prize or whatever, right. they see through all of that because they realize the value-add cost of it. And they say, why don't you just give me the money for it? And I'll decide what prize <laughs> I want to buy myself because they're smart people. Right. So for them, the reward is more, A, recognition. Maybe they get the credit or their name ends up on the product or they end up on the website uh, okay. um, to be recognized as being great at what they do. And the second example I'll give is, let's say three people work on a project and the other two didn't pull their weight and you ended up doing half the work Mm -hmm. and you were able to prove to me because we track everything, you did half the work. That meant I was minus 16% unfair to you and plus 8% extra fair to the others because I paid you all 33 and a third. That And I give you a 16% raise for the same number of hours on the next project. It means I've load balanced your unfairness through zero. So you're good with me by the end of the second project because in your mind, you're back at zero fairness. Wow. And you're constantly figuring this out with the people you're working with. And we have our own court system where people can argue and appeal their unfairness points. I'd like to see that court. It works wonderfully well because uh, people actually, (laughs) once you start putting a number on it, it just becomes math and they're very comfortable with math. Walter O'Brien's joining us. ScorpionComputers.com. ScorpionComputerService.com. And? ConcierGeUp.com. That's it. Both of the services are available for you to go check out. And you uh, launched a studio. Right. We just opened Scorpion Studios a couple of weeks ago because we have the TV show going. Second season. So, yeah, we just wrapped first season. Second season's approved. We have to yep. start filming it in July. Um, we also then have a first look deal that we've done with a large billion dollar studio that'll be announced shortly in the press. And that's for doing uh, scripted, non-scripted television shows that can come through Scorpion Studios and will be produced like the TV show. And then we're also the tech advisors uh, with Sony on the next Spider-Man. You'll see us in the credits. Wow. So uh, for Spider-Man Venom, to helping with all the aspects, the technical aspects of the weapons and the bad guys. So let's have some fun. Let's put 60 seconds on the clock. We, we call this the 60-second CEO. Walter O'Brien from, let's just call it Scorpion, is joining us. 60 seconds on the clock. Let's go. Who's your favorite entrepreneur? It's uh, probably Bill Gates. He was if, the most ruthless. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? 
I like the one I have. Which is? Being smart. Well, who's your favorite superhero? Favorite superhero? Um, probably Batman. What's your worst bad habit? I do everything too far, too fast. Too fast. Um, yeah. What's the last thing you do before you go to sleep? I actually have to meditate to help uh, calm my mind down. How many hours of sleep a night do you get? About four. What's your favorite animal? Favorite animal? Probably a dog. What was the last costume you wore? Ooh. Um, actually, I think it was a Batman costume. What was Halloween. the last best book you read? Uh, fooled by randomness. Yeah, if there was one word that describes you the best, what is that one word? Logical. Logical. And on scale one to ten, how weird are you? That's uh, all relative, but uh, I'd give it a good eight. Oh, I'll throw it right there. You go. Hey, Bill Gates. Bill Gates, favorite entrepreneur. Why Bill Gates? My personal philosophy is people should be extremely selfish for the first half of their life, and extremely unselfish for the second half because then they can do the most good. So I think if you look at that, um, Bill Gates was selfish for the first half of his life and then was able to save you know, seven million people by writing a single check for malaria for the second half of his life. It's not about how you come into this world, it's how you leave it, right? Yeah, it's the total greater good, which is my own personal philosophy. And I think you can't be charitable while you're still a charity yourself. I, very logical, there you go. A dog, give me three adjectives that describe a dog. Uh, loyal, um, friendly, energetic. And that's you. Yeah. Right? That you're a dog. You are. I know you. You are you're all three of those without a doubt. The only thing I realize, let me tell you, since I know you fairly well, the one thing that you are not good at doing, you're horrible at small talk. Correct. You can't no, chit chat at all. You just can't. Uh, yeah. Uh, very quickly, I want to get into what's your purpose on the planet you, and why are you here? You just hate it because I've seen you around, you know, a group of people and they're like, you know, chit chatting and you just, I, I'm going to go and you just walk away <laughs> and you may have started the conversation. It just cracks me up. So on uh, the concierge up, which is, it sounds like it's more of a passion project because it's so much fun right now. The strangest requests you've received that you have fulfilled would be what? Um, well, the strangest one we got recently was to rescue a polar bear from a uh, zoo in Argentina and ship it to Canada. We haven't fulfilled it yet. We're still looking at it. But uh, that's one of the stranger ones we got. Other ones are, um, you know, people with terminal diseases and trying to go outside of the U.S., maybe outside of FDA approval restrictions and find a cure anywhere on the planet for for this disease and we have many many of those so i'm going to read you i'm 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 working on this talk that i'm giving okay and i thought you would appreciate this uh, it's very quick it i'm going to read to you what the topic is and i want you to comment on it for, in about a minute okay it's called uh, the topic is the high tech search for immortality why <laughs> google microsoft and darpa are spending billions on immortality and it says, by 2045, mankind will have a Terminator moment. The rise of the computer will outpace the ability to control them. To keep up, we will have to radically transform our biology by using nanobots and machines to enhance our anatomy's DNA. So the, the idea of living and dying will change. Do you agree with that? I agree with the philosophy behind all of that. There's a few mixed metaphors in that. Um, the idea of the Terminator movie is artificial intelligence getting out of control okay. and, uh, you know, taking over humans. And I'm, I have a degree in artificial intelligence. But 2045, do you think it's a, a pivotal little, moment? Uh, subject. I don't think it's a pivotal moment for artificial intelligence. I think that'll take longer. Now, oh, the other thing that was mixed into that was immortality. Now, immortality, to upload the human brain, just what we, our essence is our consciousness and our memories. Everything else is just a temporary rental car. And to be able to back that up and restore it to a stem cell version of ourselves, I think that is possible that's within what I this century. Hear. And we're gonna get you but back on. But that's not artificial intelligence. We're gonna get Walter back on in the future, I promise you on that. Walter O'Brien from Scorpion Computer Services and Concierge Up. Thanks a lot for hanging out with us. Thanks for having me. I'm